You're listening to Chicago Stories, a podcast from City Hall featuring the stories of everyday Chicagoans, as told to Mayor Rahm Emanuel. Uh, we're here with uh, Fatma Mirza, who wrote uh, A Place for Us. Did I say it right? If I didn't yes. say it, you know, correct me if I didn't. Perfectly. You really? Yes. Your book, A Place for Us, what was the origin of that? I mean, what was the basis to writing it? Because I... I'm, as I told you before, I'm in love with this book, and I've thank recommended you. it to thousands of people. Oh, thank you so I much. Have. Um, Everybody, I take the train to work, and I talk to people, obviously, as the mayor, and they're reading a novel. I said, oh, I got a beautiful novel for you. Oh, thank you. I want my commission out of the Midwest Chicago sales. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When I get it, I will I will contact you, and I'll yeah. let you know. Um, uh, so I began writing this book when I was 18. I mm-hmm. was a freshman at UC Riverside. I had mm-hmm. gone there to study pre-med because uh, it was a deal I had made with my dad that if you, if I go to college where I want to, I'll be what you want me to be, which is a doctor at the time. Oh, and, so a Faustian bargain. Yeah, and so I I hated my chemistry classes. I hated my bio classes. Mm-hmm. I'm terrible at math. Um, and so I would take creative writing classes just for me. And in one of them, I began writing this novel. And uh, the first while time, in college, yeah, when I was a freshman. I, oh, I feel like such yeah. a slacker now. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't think that you should. But um, and every week through the different writing prompts that my teacher, um, she her name is Charmaine Craig. She. Mm-hmm. Um, she was giving different writing prompts, and every week I found myself returning to the same family through different perspectives mm-hmm. until I kind of realized that they were all hovering around the same moment, which is um, the wedding. Mm-hmm. The, the sister was getting married, and the son, Amar, had just come home after having run away three years ago. And so, um, so yeah, that was where Is there anything at. personal to that that kept drawing you back to that moment? You know, I don't think that there was, there's so much personal um, content and questions and scenes in the novel. Um, But as far as the the premise of the wedding, Mm -hmm. at the time, my, a lot of my cousins had been getting married. So a lot of my summer was spent flying to from one wedding 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 to another another, yeah especially because i have so many cousins and Mm -hmm. so and it it was around the time you should really be a jewish family and fight with everybody (laughs) and then you won't get invited (laughs) well i i do fight with my family but i still get invited (laughs) and so then it's like the tension of having to go um but it's um it was funny because you know indian weddings they Mm -hmm. last so many days and they're so like they last at least a week Mm -hmm. and they're so extravagant in terms of the imagery, like the clothing, the food, the music. And so that was like the imagery that was in my mind over the summers. And so um, when when I came time to write the novel, it kind of made sense that it would begin somewhere where the setting itself draws attention to itself. So let me ask you, your dad, you make this Mm -hmm. arrangement with your dad. We'll call it an arrangement. Mm -hmm. It's fitting for a Muslim. It was an arrangement. You don't break it, but you obviously did not go to into medicine. Oh, I definitely broke it. Yeah, but yeah. okay. Well, yeah. I was being gentle on our first meeting here. <laughs> yeah. How's dad doing uh, before the book became what it is today when you said, okay, I'm not going to study, I'm not going to become a doctor. Right. And I'm still going to go to the school I choose to. Right. So that was, um, you know, for a while it was, it was very clear that I had broken our agreement mm-hmm. and that was... Y- inevitably caused lots of tensions and but I was pretty I was pretty adamant that this is what I had to do and the more I was working on the novel the more I felt as though my duty my obligation was actually to the family that I was writing about Mm -hmm. um, more so than even what I owed to my family in a way I just felt like this is what I have to do um, and I'll give myself at least 10 years to do it and then um, so my my dad you know he was at first he was upset then he was nervous for me he was worried because that's a good dad yeah, he was like, well, who's going to read it? And how, how do you plan on supporting yourself like this? Or how do you plan mm. on? And so he had those kind of worries. And then I just kind of, um, I stayed on the track and I applied for grad school. And I, it was when I got into Iowa that my, that he thought like. Oh, the Iowa Writers, writers Workshop. Yeah. And then he was like, isn't that a good one? And I'm like, yes, well, it's, it's a good one. <laughs> and so then he was like, okay, we'll see. But he still was worried. He still, you know, he would often tell me, um, you know, why don't you write about a, a white family? Why don't you write a novel like The Hunger Games? Like, no one's going to care about this family story. No one's going to care. And that would kind of break my heart because, it, in a way, what he was saying is like, well, who's going to care about my story mm-hmm. or like a family like mine, you know? So, you know, it's, so I hear you talking, and all the time I'm reading your book, I think it's very biographical. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you talk about it as if it's this other family. Mm-hmm. There's got to be 
very rich biographical, let alone you talk about your own weddings that you go to with cousins. Yes. Yeah. So it is not autobiographical, and yet it is deeply, deeply rooted in my personal observations. The mm-hmm. way that I thought about it is that, um, you know, my own journey is not really in the novel, and it did feel like I was following this family story, and it was becoming its own thing further mm-hmm. and further from what I had, mm-hmm. you know, the original parts of biography that was in it. Mm -hmm. The way that I thought about it was that in a context that was very familiar to me, like what is it like to grow up uh, the children of immigrants from India? You know, you speak Urdu in the home, but when you leave the home, you speak English. Mm -hmm. Your brothers kind of understand what you're going through in a way that your parents don't. You can tell your brothers your secrets. It creates a closer knit sibling relationship. Absolutely. The kind where you can tell your brother like, don't tell Baba this. And your brother's like, okay, I won't, you know, and then it kind of allows you to do what you want to, but still feel like you're in the family, kind Mm -hmm. of, you know. So there was all these things that was very personal that I wanted to explore. Also, like, what is it like to grow up in a family that's so rooted in faith and you find yourself struggling with faith um, or trying to honor it in your own way? Mm -hmm. And so, um, but the characters themselves have their own personalities. They're, like, almost, like, more extreme versions of me or people that I know or, yeah. So I have, like, 20 questions. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. I want to know how a person your age can so incredibly, given the last chapter about the father and the son's conversation, and also the thoughts of a father, how do you understand, and I'm saying that is the between the two of us as yeah. the father in this conversation, Yeah. how do you get that? How did you know a father and son's relationship in a way that, this is your first novel, and I find that last chapter m- the you. most incredible literature I've read in a while, and the fact that, obviously, this is your first book, let alone, um, as far as I can tell, you're neither the father or the son. No, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, Unless there's the something father, else you want to talk about on this, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in this interview. It's an incredible Thank perspective, you. and understanding both their voices and their subconscious and their conscious. Thank you. Um, I don't really have it's an a answer total, for It's that a total suck-up question. It's yeah. easy. Take it anywhere you want. <laughs> I'm serious. It's like one of the most incredible things. Thank you. Um, So, well, one strange thing is that a lot of the writing of the novel felt like work, like hard work, where Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to imagine, like, what is a mom thinking in this moment, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, because she does have different value systems than I do. And so, like, how can I really render her? But with the father section, I didn't expect that I would write it. And it almost came, it came exactly like it did. And I would... I, I know this sounds like a weird thing to say, but I actually wouldn't remember writing it after I was done. I would like not really remember having written it. Was, was that your easiest chapter? Yes, it was the absolute easiest. Well, chapter that's amazing. To write. And it, fa- and it. That's that- the truth, right? It was your easiest chapter or your yes. fastest chapter. Yes. Or- all of it's it. It's amazing. And it, and it felt almost, that one was the f- one that it felt like I'm just a vehicle for this character. I'm not actually doing anything. He's leading me through his voice. Um, mm. But I think where it was born from, I mean, I I grew up um, in, I, you know, my father immigrated to the United States from India. And I, th- like, the gulf between me and my parents or other my cousins and their parents in that particular situation is a little bit greater than just um you know the parent child gulf Mm -hmm. which is one of years and do you think you could have written this book about a muslim immigrant family living in california if uh the whole narrative in this country post 9 11 Mm -hmm. do you think you could have that that your book would have the same resonance with the with the readership today um that's kind of like a i mean it's a hypothetical so question so my constant goal with this novel was to 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 of course they're muslim of course that informs the way that they move through the world and they're um but my goal was to really um get at the heart of what these characters story was for them mm-hmm. and for the father it is this like deep longing for his son who has left him mm-hmm. and realization that he has he has in many ways been the one who's caused that to happen to his family or Mm -hmm. all of them are thinking that. And so I believe that's a story that transcends any kind of, that's like just a human, yeah, any moment and any kind of identity. Um, 
One thing that I'm very grateful for is that I ac- I did begin this story when I was 18, which was the first year mm-hmm. that Obama had been elected, and so I'm I'm sure that there was some kind had of had an incredible chief of staff. Yeah. Sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. That's now, really, but, yeah. but here's the <laughs> that was a freebie. I had to take right, that no, shot. Right. No. Yeah. But I me, almost gave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the setup. Yeah. Uh, no. On the th- other thing that was on the title, a place for mm-hmm. us. Now my junior varsity research obviously you know your from your family's from india and you're muslim you're not mm-hmm. really welcomed in india muslim community uh and in america post 9 11 we have our own heartaches here mm-hmm. and so is the play the title about where do we belong i think that the or is title that has... mis- is my misnomer about the way i describe the muslim community versus the hindu relationships in india wrong but i don't think it is well i think that the you know, there's a there's so many Muslim people right. living in in India, and that there there has definitely been times where it's been, um, you as just we give know, me that caused, evil steer. <laughs> no, no, it's there's been de- definite like moments in history where right. there has been like intense tensions conflicts, and yeah. conflicts that we all know about. But there's also been, um, there's also been like an exchange of culture and language and food and community mm-hmm. and like times where it hasn't felt that you know where that hasn't been the case that there has been harmony. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I think that it's interesting um, to see in throughout history, like whether it's Muslims and Hindus or any kinds of groups, that there's always like waves of tolerance and intolerance mm-hmm. and, and um, a desire to understand and share culture between mm-hmm. different cultures and uh, a fear that rises, you know. And so that's just kind of like... Yeah, I think that's one of the patterns of unfortunate patterns of the world. Um, but in terms of the title, I think that yes, that is one of the um, forces behind it. Yeah, and another one is kind of this um, this feeling that within this this family, even within this family, there there is a discord. There's not quite a harmony where all of their desires can't all coexist. And so there's like this hopeful reaching in the novel. And I think that the title implies that like. Maybe there is a place for us mm-hmm. where we can move past these things. Mm-hmm. One of the things I found um, powerful also in the book, and I think it's, is the child's perspective, or at least it was true, obviously, the son and the, the eldest daughter. And I say this as a son of an immigrant. Mm-hmm. You This dual loyalty, which is you want to be true to your family's heritage and religion, and yet you want to be accepted and adopted in the place that you call home. Yes. And anytime you do one, Obviously, for your home, you feel like you're violating your fidelity to your parents yes. and their faith, and that kind of duality and split. Right. And it's you captured it so incredibly. Thank you. Beautiful. That was one of the um, the the main driving. I don't know questions. if you know this. I really like your book. Thank <laughs> you. I, I can tell, and I'm so, I feel so grateful. Um, that was a tension in my life. Like mm-hmm. when you're talking about what is autobiographical and mm-hmm. what is not, I think one of the things that I wanted to understand is, you know, how can I both honor where I'm from and also honor myself? How can I, um, you know create a life for myself that is mine that reflects me and also doesn't isolate the people that I care about the most you mm-hmm. know and and what are the moments when when that when you can kind of quiet that desire in you because it would cause pain and what are the moments mm-hmm. that doing so would just be you would just be um, giving yourself a fate that's you know hollow or not true to you you know mm-hmm. and so those were all questions that I was thinking about growing up and writing this novel really helped me one I think um, fight for a life that that is authentic to me and and express to my parents that you know actually this is how I practice or this is how I don't um, mm-hmm. partly because I you know in writing this novel I was able to understand through these characters an answer to that question that as a teenager, I didn't understand or even want to understand with patience. And so there was like lots of slamming of doors and, you know, like sneaking out of oh, the windows. Oh, you see, you've adopted and, the American attitude so and, well, yes. just slamming the doors. Right. But I didn't want to do that in the novel. I, I, it felt too, it would feel too narrow. And so when you talked about the father's section, like how, where did that come from? Part of it was born from you know, knowing on one hand, you know, my dad might say something to me that makes me want to slam the door, but also knowing that he is a a person who has had his own history, his own universe. He's 
somebody who's become who he is because of so many factors that I cannot even imagine. And so by writing the father section, even though it's not my own father, but like mm-hmm. imagining Amara's father and how the I loved father. your father in the book. Thank you. Yeah. He, well, no, I yeah. actually, I love your father and I'm like, I love <laughs> and your mother's entire attempts and then realize, obviously, I mean, I'm not going to, I don't want to ruin the book for anybody, but I actually yeah. ended up because of that last chapter, so loving your father, who is not the problem, and your mother <laughs> in the yeah, novel. Yeah, who not made that, it, not my who, mother, mother, right? But, but yeah, creates Mars the problems mother. and yet tried everything else to do to protect her son. Yeah. Is your bro- is the the young man in the, the son in the book? My is, brother? Yeah, your brother. Uh, but <laughs> is he a mix of all your brothers? No. How many siblings actually, do we have? So I'm the oldest child. I'm the right. oldest and only girl, and I have three younger brothers. And this is a question that's actually been asked uh, quite oh, a lot of my brothers. Oh, I thought it was such an brothers. original Amar. No. Well, a lot of people are like, oh, they'll meet my brothers, and they'll say, yeah. are you Amar? And my brothers are like, definitely none of us are. That's definitely Fatima. <laughs> um, so actually, the truth is that Amar is who... Amar, Amar is you if is you were you boy. In a way, if I was a boy, and also if I, if instead of writing, I took a much more destructive path you know instead Could of it them you I think so I think Why? it um, it doesn't I don't buy that I feel like you know there's I don't know what I'm talking about yeah, I just threw no. that out as to be contradictory but well I can I can handle it I okay. can take it um I feel that what I shared in Amara was this feeling that um, of deep loyalty f- to where you're from mm-hmm. and also feeling that, you know, though your parents are practicing the religion in one way, you don't quite want to or feeling that, you know, perhaps, um, y- you know, he really feels that uh, like he, he does feel like he's both inside and outside of the world that he's been mm-hmm. born into. And so I feel like that was something that I I kind of felt as a child that and but luckily I, instead is of he, taking a mars path he, he, I wrote, did you want to be him did i want to be him mm-hmm. at some point growing up uh, yeah i think uh, who doesn't who doesn't who doesn't want to just say like i'm going that to was so a, that was a hand follow. gesture and that's <laughs> yeah. all we're going to leave it at <laughs> yeah so yeah, what are the ages if i can of your brothers um I am, Mohsen is three years younger than me. Uh-huh. He is, oh my God, how old How old is he? He's 25. Right. <laughs> Ali is 23. Ali Musa, he was actually one of the biggest readers for my book. He was he was 15 when I started. Mm-hmm. And every time I'd finish a section, yeah, I'd it give it to him. him. And I would ask him like, okay, Ali, what's, what's working? What's not working? Oh. And it was actually incredible how much he could house in his brain because um, sometimes I'd call him and I'd say like, Ali, I'm thinking about deleting this scene. And he would say, Fatma, delete it you called me six months ago with that same <laughs> question and you haven't deleted it and so i was like oh thanks ali and mehdi is 19 so yeah. pronounce the last name mehdi uh, what a beautiful name Thank all you. three of them are yeah. beautiful so you're teaching at nyu i am teaching at nyu yes what do you say to young aspiring writers who are working on their first novel and now they have a teacher who like just bangs it out of the park on the first <laughs> time up to bat um one thing i love trying i love teaching it's the yes. closest thing to doing the thing you itself. do love teaching i love it I love it. I feel very fortunate. It's, I think it's a huge responsibility. Mm-hmm. Um, and one thing that I try to impart to the students is, above all, a uh, like a respect for their characters mm-hmm. and a love for their characters and a desire to really understand what what story they're trying to tell and not in a simple way and not in a way that's kind of making a fool of their characters if their characters are misbehaving Mm -hmm. and not in a way that's like um cheapens them yeah or tries to like put them through cruel hoops Mm -hmm. and then just see how they react but really ask them like like who is this character and how can you better understand them and communicate that to a reader Mm -hmm. you working on your second novel no not yet really no yeah you got I mean, ideas. I have chicken. ideas. I have ideas, and I'm. Do you um, want to stay with the novel? You want us to do good short story? Or you want to stay with the narr- the format of a novel? I think it would be very fun to try to write some short stories because it takes so much less from you. It's um, the novel is like a a decade long task. I think you say um, take from you. You don't feel it nourishing, or it really is a hard. Uh, it absolutely nourishes you. It's the most, it's the only thing I want to do in a way, but it also exhausts you. It, mm-hmm. It's one thing that it exhausts you is emotionally, just to sit with like somebody else's feeling that is not your own, but try to imagine it so painfully um, or so completely. It does give you that feeling in a way. Like there was times where I would make, for example, writing you the father's. You like a parent with a child. Oh, do I? <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they do feel kind of like my children. And no, I felt I did, as protective I'm, of them as a, I think a parent might feel. 
feel of their children. Yeah, I wanted. Yeah. It was just an observation of the language you're using. That's all I was. Doing. Yeah, um, but when I was there, was times when I would write a scene that was sad, and I knew what it would do to the characters, mm-hmm. like the father scene, and it would destroy my day. And I, it would like it would destroy it, your day. Yeah, like I would just stay in that emotional headspace, and I would call my mom and I'd say, "Mommy, like, <laughs> I, you know, I made them do this." Isn't it amazing thing. when you call your parents and you go yeah. immediately go back to like when you're 14 yes. in voice? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's and, when my yeah. brothers all get together. Like we. Immediately really revert to 16, 15, and 14. It right. takes us like two days to come back to our ages. Right, right. Which is like the beauty and the, the terrible aspect of family. So you're not writing, so You're are you mulling something? I'm mm-hmm. not asking you to expose anything you're not supposed to, but are you mulling around, yes. kicking around something? I am. Um, I think the reason that I haven't started writing it is because it will require a lot more research. I think with this novel, it was me going back. I was, I wasn't, um, you know, I was so young when I started it that all I knew was this intimate family experience, and that's mm-hmm. what I wanted to portray. And now I've kind of been a person in the world, and I think my questions are have inevitably expanded. Um, and so I think my next novel will be, I want I want to stretch myself. And so I'm. What do you like? Who, if there was uh, three authors that you say that you read consistently, or you say these are the three people I'm like, these are my north stars. Uh huh. Um, great or question. Two. Two, okay, two is... Look, I got a name in my class already. I got a great quote. Two great (laughs) questions so far. Yeah. (laughs) No, many. So I love reading history. And in the summers, I I make all my uh, kids... Everybody has to have a summer reading list. I have my summer reading I always leave open literature because I'm nervous about it because mm-hmm. I don't think I understand it. Uh-huh. And I happen to pick up your book, which mm. is, and that's the one piece of literature I read this oh. summer. And I obviously, as you know, a zealot a protector advocate of your book. Thank uh, you. But I feel inadequate about reading literature. Uh-huh. Why? This is my interview, okay? <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I, don't, I feel like I'm missing every... Like history... I just finished on the plane uh-huh. Mike Beschloss book who I interviewed him a couple of weeks ago on Presence at War. Uh-huh. I have a Max Hastings next one I'm going to read on Vietnam. I just that stuff I get and I understand I know it. Right. Literature I feel inadequate to the task. I feel like you uh-huh. got like subplots to plots to subplots and I'm like Interesting. reading a story and well, I feel I, like I'm missing it. Well, I think that the the I knew I could turn this question to you about me, but go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> well, to respond to your point, I, I feel that there is no right way to read literature because the literature is not asking you to memorize a certain facts or um, see how did this event in history cause this thing mm-hmm. to happen, you know, which there is kind of a um, maybe a more direct way to, to read it. But with literature, all it asks is that you experience something and that you spend time with a character who's not like you and you just hear what it's like to be them. So is there a writer you would like to either copy or not copy, literally, but yeah. that's your North Star? Or is there a writer that you would, uh, if there was one writer you would like to sit down to talk to today, yes. who would he or she be? Um, the first two that come to mind is... Uh, James Baldwin mm-hmm. and Marilyn Robinson. Hmm. I love both of those writers. Mm-hmm. Mar- I was actually really lucky to study with Marilyn in Iowa, so I did get to sit down with her. Mm-hmm. And, so you and get a, you get a ringer then. So who's your other one? Um, Since you re- okay, so let's I'm joking, see. but you can. Why do you like James Baldwin? Um, I think that James Baldwin is a writer who's so uh, perceptive of uh, the the moment in time that he's writing in and. Also, what that time, the con, like the context of that, greater than the one moment that he's writing in, as well as um, just his prose is like it captures it so beautifully too. Like he's a writer who's operating on all kinds of levels mm-hmm. and layers of depth, depth. Um, mm-hmm. And I would like very much aspire to be able to do that. You ever read uh, George Saunders? I love George Saunders. Mm-hmm. I re- do, what have you read of George Saunders? Lincoln. Uh huh. Bur- uh huh. He has a great short story called mm-hmm. John. John? Yeah, yeah. Right, look it up. I'll, yeah. Like, I'll it's really it. good? It's so good. It's one of my favorite short stories. Hmm. Yeah. You ever read Julian Barnes? No, I haven't. Great writer. Yeah. He's a really great writer. Do you ever read history or no? Um, Not as much as I w- would have liked to. I feel that I started writing this novel so young and um, I just, f- I, I, I wanted to train everything in my mind to, to One, write the novel. Yeah. And I feel that for the past eight years, that's all I trained my mind to do. And so there's a way in which I haven't like read history as much as I want to. Mm-hmm. I actually don't. I'm horrible at math. There's so much stuff that I just have not um, engaged with 
that I've been just dying to engage with. And, mm. I, and I'm hoping that going forward, I can create fiction that does allow me to be like a student of the world, too. Hmm. You said an, you have to do research. Uh-huh. Yes. Um, so is it about this time, moment? All I will say is that it is a little bit about this moment, but it's also about moments that um, are that have existed generations before that if we were to study deeper, mm -hmm. we might learn from in this moment. Do you moment. feel somewhat constrained on the second novel by the way the first one's been such a success people expect you to write in this, um, in the same way? If they... Do you think it's constraining? I, you know... Is it on the periphery? I haven't started, you know, I haven't actually sat down to, to, to write, so mm -hmm. I hope that it won't be, but inevit I'm sure that I'll feel c some kind of pressure or a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. um, but I would hope to that when I do get to a place where I'm sitting down with the page, I can convince myself that it's just me and the page, and also that just because I... I um, felt very I feel that I did right by this family story doesn't mean that I'm necessarily going to do right by the story that is ahead of me and so I hoped like I, I just want to maintain that beginner's mentality where I'm trying to prove to the content that I'm well and why you it. give you the time to write well what and why you give you the time to write? um well I'm doing a few different jobs at the moment oh, and okay. so with that and the other jobs no I don't really have time to write I have um and also, I've been traveling for the book, so right now I have no time to write. But hopefully, I can, you know, make something work when I. Oh, okay. If yeah. you need somebody to help you on that, I'll handle it for you. With okay. The, thank with you. The authorities <laughs> that be okay. All right. Thank so you. we do this fast round. Yes. Okay. You have to know. Have you been to Chicago? I have been to Chicago. Okay. When were you in Chicago? Um, I have not spent as much time in Chicago as I want to, but when well, I was... Well, we can put that on the list beyond studying history and getting good at math. Yes, going to Chicago. Yeah, more. And, yeah, and you can tell me everything that I need to do and see there. Right. But um, my, when I was in Iowa City, my cousin was uh, doing residency in Indiana. Wow. And so once but we met in the... Yeah, we met in the middle for like 24 hours and we just caught up. Cousins on which side of the family? My dad's side. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, here's a fast round. Ready? Ready. You can't go wrong. Okay. And I'll, I'll help you out, okay? Mm -hmm. Chicago Cubs or Chicago White Sox? I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Pick one baseball team. You uh, can't go Cubs. wrong. Cubs. There. See, okay. wasn't that hard, was no. it? Thick or thin pizza? Thin pizza. Is that the wrong answer? No, it's fine. Okay, okay. Thin pizza. Sears Tower or the John Hancock Tower? Sears Tower. <laughs> the Chicago Lake, Lake Michigan, or the Chicago River? The lake. Okay. 16-inch uh, softball or a 12-inch softball? What's the difference? 16 inches yeah. versus 12 inches. You really aren't good at math. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll go with 12. Fine. Okay. There. Yes. <laughs> not yeah. that bad. No, not bad at all. You handled it just yeah. perfectly. Yeah. yeah. Chicago is famous for 16-inch softball. Uh-huh. Famous for thick pizza. Interesting. The Sears Tower became the Willis Tower, but we say it uh -huh. as Sears, and that's the original. And uh -huh. socks and baseball. You haven't been back since the, um, the river has become, we built a river walk. Uh-huh. And it's really become... Part of the city in well, a way I'd that love the, to come visit. Yeah. I've I've been doing going to different cities on book tour, but I haven't been to Chicago. Have yet. you been? Are you surprised at how the book snapped at people as your yes. first novel? I'm very surprised. I'm I'm. It's been very like almost so overwhelming that I've I've stopped processing it. You know, mm -hmm. um, but when but also you know. What has actually surprised me is that for so long I felt fiercely protective of the story and of my time and of making it become what I wanted it to be and I felt so invested in it that the thought of not working on it would devastate me and I would like towards the end I was like crying when it was time to turn my manuscript in yeah literally this really is your child yeah literally when the the messenger came mm. to pick up the manuscript to take it to Penguin Random House and I was holding on to it and the messenger said you you can let go now <laughs> and I was like okay and I let go and I just cried and cried um did but, you call him to see if he got there uh, time? no but I quickly emailed him I was like has it come you know <laughs> um so yes I was like the 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 parent yeah. of this kid who's like and you visited in college yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, is there no, parent weekend for a novel yeah, yeah. No. has um, there been any surprises on the book tour by anybody is that anything that surprised you from the book tour that people i'm just so surprised that people are um that it's resonating with people so deeply and that you know 
um, one thing that has been really beautiful is uh, parents who say that this has made them think about their parenting or um, children who say, you know, for so long I struggled with my dad because he was like Rafiq and yet it makes me feel so much more sympathy for my dad. And and so that feels really fortunate. That feels like a, a good thing because mm. in a way this the family story is tragic in a way. Um, but if 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 it will allow a reader to one feel that but then think like okay how can i love better how can i love better so i don't do in my life what these characters did in fiction i'll feel that that to me was just... i just say as a father i thought your book was with i mean i have a son and two daughters i thought it was a incredible the way you capture both your father the father and mother's relationship and then their individual relationship with the children thank you it's an incre- and i still i'm i'm I'm, I only wanted to do this interview to figure out how you wrote <laughs> that last chapter, and I still I'm I'm walk out unanswered because it's <laughs> incredible. I'm sorry, I don't have an answer. No, but it's an incredible insight. Thank it's you. as somebody who has a I think a very good relationship with his uh, all three kids, but the son is an incredible capture of also how a parent looks back and thinks about mm-hmm. what they did right and what they did wrong and what they could have if they had a shot a second shot. Mm-hmm at starting the conversation differently and ending it differently. Mm-hmm. I, that is such a... And it's interesting since you don't have kids. I don't have kids. I no. just took a wild guess, but I know you... Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I don't <laughs> have kids. To understand that parental uh-huh. voice in their head. I think that question of going back and seeing what can I do better is so productive as a person because it's, in a way, it's, it also asks you like, okay, now, and how can I make sure that mm-hmm. moving forward, mm-hmm. I can learn from the growth of these moments? And mm-hmm. actually, it's like a kind of like a beautiful thing to think like, mm-hmm. what did I do wrong? Because that's also asking you to think like, yeah, so now how can re- I be better? Uh, yeah. Beautiful name. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's interesting because I, uh, when I first read it, you said you're Indian Muslim. Mm-hmm. And having grown up a good por- part of my life in Israel, hmm. I didn't Fatima. I said that's a Muslim name, but from the Middle East. So yeah. now it's interesting. So your family was it from your family from Tehran? Um, no, no, I actually it was a city nor in northern, very Iran. north in Iran, but I'm not sure exactly where. And my my dad's other ancestors were from Turkey, mm. and so they all moved to India and based uh, on economics or. Um, actually, interestingly, I know my great great grandparents. They had moved to s- teach Turkish and um, in uh, a college in India. Hmm. That's what I do know. And so, to me, it's kind of interesting because they it was my somewhere in my ancestors they were studying language and teaching mm-hmm. language. But it's a language that because the generations in that stayed in India, you know, I don't know Turkish and I don't know Farsi. You don't. No, but my ancestors did. But I know Urdu because right. my father learned Urdu and you know and now i'm i speak english and urdu and who knows generations from now maybe urdu will be lost if we stay here you know what i mean so it's like kind of interesting to see like how yeah i'm sorry if that's not interesting to you but uh, well, <laughs> yeah it's very interesting no it's yeah. interesting it's the same there's very similar i mean i i'm trying to figure out because when i read your book part of this is the conflict tension that exists between being a child of an immigrant and being true and honest and have a fidelity Mm-hmm. to your family, its history, its culture, its language, and then wanting to fit in. Right. And that's why I think it's a, I mean, and but it's obviously because I know people who don't have that personal relationship with what the narrative is about, but then can still resonate and re- rather really connect to your book from a family perspective, like all families, whether it's an immigrant family or not. Right. The tensions that exist between a father and a son, the tensions that exist or a mother's desire to protect her only son. Right. I still don't get your the second daughter in this book. Yeah, she's like she's, she's yeah. She's not really um right. But as a middle as mid, middle child I kind of feel like no she's lost in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> but she she does speak sometimes and when she right. does it may, she makes it count. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah. I wasn't I wasn't criticizing yeah, her. You, uh, I want you to know you do no wrong in my views, okay? Oh, thank you. Um <laughs> but I a lot of people have wondered why doesn't Hadi Huda get a perspective. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, Mayor Rahm Emanuel from Chicago Stories with Fatima. Fatima. I got yeah. that right. Yes. Farheen. Farheen. Mirza. Mirza. Yes. Thank you so much. No. This was the opposite. Really Thank you. Mm-hmm. Appreciate it. Thank you. You've been listening to Chicago Stories with Mayor Rahm Emanuel. 
You can subscribe and leave a review on Apple Podcasts. And tweet your guest ideas using hashtag ShyStories. Thanks for listening. <laughs>